Rubens is one of my favorite artists. But it was an artist I came to late because we just don't really have him in museums in the States because his works are too big. Most of the Rubens are in Europe. And so if you go to Europe and you go to the big museums there, that's where you see the Rubens. Now let me get this thing going. I'm having a lot of technical difficulties today. There we go. So he's 1577 to 1640. Rubens was a real contradiction in terms because he was a Baroque individual. He was uh, in the uh, Counter-Reformation period, which was the Catholic opposition to the Reformation. But he was also a very Renaissance man because he had so many different sides. Rubens spoke five different languages. He was a classical scholar. He produced or oversaw over 3,000 works of art. It's a lot. And if that's not enough, he was one of the most important diplomats in Europe at that time. And he represented crown heads from all over Europe and brokered deals. Very interesting, something you would never see nowadays, but it was a different type of culture back then. These are pictures of Rubens. Rubens was known for his Rubenesque women. The term came from him, which is well-upholstered women. <laughs> <laughs> they were the, the lame Bryant models of the day. Yeah. And that was his taste. It's interesting, one of his major models was his wife, and he painted naked pictures of her, and they're all over Europe. You know, not a lot of people today would do it, but it's a different time, different place. One of the other things that's interesting about Rubens is his um, art was monumental. Huge stuff. I mean, paintings 30 feet across quite often. I mean, just really large works of art. Some of the things that I like the most about Rubens are the fact that his paintings are just very, very decorative. You can look at a Rubens painting and you can look at a Rubens painting, and you can keep looking at it, and you just can't. There used to be a, a science fiction book, and the word was grok. You couldn't grok. You couldn't grasp it. And it, it's just so much stuff going on. So you can keep looking at it for years, and it's just always entertaining and interesting, as opposed to a lot of art that you'll see today, which is just right there before your eyes. Rubens developed his style... You can see here the, the size of a lot of his paintings, and they'll have a whole room devoted to him at the big major museums in Europe. This is huge paintings. He got his training in Italy when he was a young man. He went there and he studied all the great artists. The one they say that was most influential to him was Titian in Venice. He really liked his style, but he made everything his own. One of the things that he kind of robbed from Venice was a, a very innovative in the sense that, you know, in Italy, I don't know how many of you know this stuff, but a lot of the paintings are actually frescoes that are painted on the walls. But you can't do that everywhere because Italy's very dry, most of it. Well, in Venice, it's very moist because of all the canals and everything. And there they did all of the wall paintings that were all done on canvas. So he borrowed that. And all over Northern Europe now, he has his canvases that are painting. And one of the things that's kind of interesting is that he did a ceiling of a big banquet room in a major a palace in England. And oh, you can see his women back there. <laughs> they, they love to eat. You know, one of the reasons why I was looked upon as, as, as a, a virtue for a woman to be so... Uh, well, plushed, plush in her, her figure back then, was because there were s so many famines. Only really rich people had enough food to eat. Now, if you see this, this right here, I'm going to come back to this. These are all paintings about the Queen Mother of France. 
all, all of this, a huge room. I mean, this is the type of monumental scale. We'll get back to this, this English thing. He painted this ceiling uh, all on canvas, and it was huge. It was like, you know, 15, 20 times the size of this room here, and moved it to England and installed it. And one of the interesting, this is the Queen Mother of France right there. I'm going to stop it right here, because I think I'm talking a long time. This is what it looked like, you know, this sort of style. You can see this, the type of women. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about him is that most, like you think of Leonardo, you think of uh, Michelangelo, you think of all these other artists, they paint all their works themselves. Well, Rubens was a real innovator. He was sort of like that uh, um, Chihuly or... Warhol, centuries earlier, and that he had a, basically like a factory, a studio that painted his work. He would go there and he would, he would paint the basic structure of the painting. And he would do the main faces, but then he had all these other artists that would paint everything else. So it was, he was actually really innovative. Now, some of his patrons were... The, they balked at this. They wanted a real Rubens painted only by his hand. And occasionally, if it was like a king or something, he could get a piece like that. But Rubens really insisted on working like this. And to me, it really didn't matter because if you look at a painting like this, if you have been looking at Rubens, if you've been seeing his paintings, whether he painted all of it or somebody else, Every painting that he painted is a Rubens. It has his very signature style. And I think that that's, uh, that's something that you just really have to take into account. I'm going to get Wayne, Dwayne, to come up right now. And show this painting. This I have a Rubens. Well, not a real one. But, <laughs> I have a Giclée print, which is 10,000 pixels per square inch, so it's, it's pretty, pretty accurate. So just walk around and show everybody. This is a, the, four con the allegory of the four continents, and it's very, 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 very typical of Rubens. And one of the things that's interesting that you'll see in there, and you'll see in the pictures that I show later, he had a thing for animals. <laughs> they were just starting to import a lot of these exotic animals into Europe, you know, for the royal family. And they were fascinated by the lions and tigers and elephants and all these things and horses. And that brings me to another point about Rubens that's very important about his style. More than any other artist, I can say this, more than any other artist, Rubens was able to convey through brush strokes the sense of activity, the sense that these animals and people are moving, and you'll see in these pictures that are going to come up, thank you, Dwayne, you'll see in these pictures that are going to come up that Rubens was able to have this real dynamism in his painting. So I'm going to... Other thing I forgot to say was, look at the skin. Rubens was, along with Renoir, the master of skin tone. Nobody could make that lily white Flemish skin look so real as Rubens could. A lot of his paintings had classical allegories employed in them because he was a classical scholar. You can see the sense of color. The color is just impeccable. Look at her skin there. It's just breathtaking. You can see how complex his paintings are. Just a lot of stuff going on. And you have to remember these paintings, a lot of them would be the size of this whole wall. You can see the tiger. I mean, look, that thing looks like it's just actually moving in the painting.
This is the charcoal that he did. This is one of his most famous paintings, is The Descent from the Cross. He was uh, very much employed as a um, one who promoted the Catholic agenda. He was very tied into the church. So, that is Rubens. I hope you enjoyed him. I think he's just fabulous. And it's... Uh, there's a lot on the internet if you want to check him out. Thank you very much.